Last week in the Bowling Green Falcons welcomed in Louisiana Tech to the Doy on homecoming. Falcons go down 35 to 7. Coach Scott Leffler in his press conference said today that 24 plays were not executed correctly. Nine touchdowns could have been scored but were not and 42 points were left on the field. John's here. He's going to break down one of the plays that really stuck out to Coach Leffler um, that could have been a touchdown but was not. Right. And so you're going to see right here. This is Quentin Morris. He's just lined up as a tight wing. And you're going to watch. The whole play is play action is designed to affect these three guys here, the linebacker and the safety. Now watch this safety here. He's going to suck up because he's looking in the backfield. That leaves Quentin mm -hmm. wide open. All Quentin has to do is make the catch. The mm -hmm. problem is Quentin doesn't make the catch. One of the better balls that Darius Wade threw on this day, and Quentin didn't catch the ball, mm -hmm. and that's how you short-circuit drives. More importantly, that's how you lose football games. Absolutely. And, and Tight ends in the BG offense have caught 21 of the 54 receptions so far this season. So they're in the progression. They're being used to catch the ball. How does what does Quentin need to do to start catching the ball? He's got to focus. I mm -hmm. mean, you look at Quentin's stat line from Saturday, and it looks like a good game. Six catches, mm -hmm. 90 yards. But then you, get, if you go back and you watch the film, you see there were four or five drop balls, including a drop mm -hmm. touchdown in the end zone. You know, these are things that you cannot do to win, but it's what coach talks about. You know, he said after the game and he said at the coaches show this evening, he talked about a Thursday practice where there were mm -hmm. nine drop balls. Thursday practices where there mm -hmm. were missed assignments. Thursday practices are the easiest thing in the world. You mm -hmm. literally don't even tape your ankles. You put on ankle braces so you can get out of there in a hurry. Mm -hmm. And on a Thursday practice to have a sloppy Thursday practice, that's a real problem. But he's like you said, like he said, you play, you practice on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Whatever you do on those days comes out on Saturday, and we saw that happen again. Yeah, and Quentin, I, I probably coach saw him miss some balls in that week, and that's what reflected on the field. Definitely. I, I think you know, what, that was one of the things when, we, when Urban came in, you mm -hmm. know, and I think the difference between this group and the group that I played on in 01 mm -hmm. is that we had a very strong senior class. We had seniors almost at every position. Yeah. And so at that point, there was a leader in each group that made sure that the guys stayed focused, this team doesn't necessarily have that. And I mm -hmm. think and you had seniors, not only were seniors, but seniors that were tired of losing. Yeah. Seniors that came from winning programs. You don't necessarily have that here. And I think it's just going to take a little bit longer for that culture to take hold where they understand we have to be about business at that practice so that we can be about business on Saturday afternoon. I will say in the press conference today, it seemed like this was the most frustrating loss. It, it didn't come after Kansas State. It was this week. They left 42 points on the field. The players actually thought it was 60 right when they walked off the field after that Louisiana Tech loss. It seemed like they were more frustrated than ever and that they are honestly sick of losing at this point. Watching it from the booth, it was the most frustrating loss mm -hmm. because you saw, watching it from the booth, you saw the mistakes. You saw a missed block here, a drop pass there. You saw how even on the first drive when they scored the touchdown, they continuously shot themselves in the foot. And you realize you cannot do those things to win. Mm -hmm. You have a 17-play, 97-yard drive, and you don't score a touchdown? You don't put any points on the board? Mm -hmm. that, that's almost unheard of. You know, we spent the whole third quarter on the plus side of the field, and you come away with no points. That's poor, that's poor execution. That's not concentrating, and that is losing football. And that's why we lost the game. Mm -hmm. You look at the score, mm -hmm. and then you look at the plays. The score is not indicative of how well we played, especially on the defensive side of the ball, but it got to a point where you're not playing complimentary football those guys are on the field too long, and it starts to look really bad. I was going to say, the bright spot is the defense under Brian Van Gorder, and that's what Coach really liked what he saw this past mm -hmm. weekend. It was the defense. What is so different from last year when they were letting teams, on average, score 42 points a game? Well, I think first and foremost is you've got a down four that can get pressure without having to bring a blitz. Mm -hmm. Carl Brooks was not credited with any sacks on Saturday, but he created about three or four with everything, with all of his pressure. Mm -hmm. You saw DeMonte Hagler get in there. You saw Kanawalski get in there. You saw Nico Lawton get in there. Those guys are shooting the gaps. They're making plays from the down four. Makes it very easy. So if you actually bring a fifth and a sixth guy, those guys are really going to get home, and this mm -hmm. looks, like, looks like a jailbreak. That's what they're doing from a pass rushing standpoint. And then from a run fit situation they're doing a great job they had the one big play where Henderson busted the 74 yard run in the third quarter they really kind of blew the game open but aside from that it was a very strong defensive effort they just had to be on the field too much because the offense could not mm -hmm. put points on the board
And that means defense was probably a little more tired, allowing those 35 points to get in. Without a doubt. Now Bowling Green is going on the road to Kent State. They're opening MAC play. You can call it a fresh start if you want. They're still one and two on the season. <laughs> what obstacles does this Kent State team present? Well, I think Kent State, they offer two quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. And looking at the statistics, looking at some of the some of the game film, they're two different quarterbacks. They're both good quarterbacks, but the old saying goes, if you've got two quarterbacks, you've got none. Mm -hmm. That's the way that it works out. So obviously, Sean Lewis is not sold on either one of those guys because it would only be one guy playing. They have a dynamic running back they can, that can get after it. And then on the defensive side of the ball, they've got experience in the defensive backfield and their front seven gets after it. This is going to be a dogfight. Let's not forget, mm -hmm. Bowling Green Kent is a rivalry. It's not the rivalry that Bowling Green Toledo is. It's not the Bowling the rivalry that Bowling Green Miami is. But both of these schools play for the anniversary of war. Both mm -hmm. were opened in 1910. These schools know each other very well and do not like each other very much. Hmm. All right. I want your score prediction. Ooh. I mean, well, you see last week, 35. I got the 35 points right, just the wrong team. But yeah. um, I think this game is going to be 24-17. Okay. I think Bowling Green is finally going to be able to put it together. Mm -hmm. um, I think that they're going to find a way to shut down this Sean Lewis offense. Um, I, I said last week that last week's game shows you where our ceiling is. Mm -hmm. This game will show us where our floor is. If we do not have a good performance in this game, it is going to be a very long fall in Bowling Green, Ohio. I agree. Coach said he's frustrated with how many touchdowns and points were left on the field, but he's excited to see how his Falcons respond. So we will see this Saturday, 3.30 p.m. kickoff at Kent State. BG opening up Mac play. That's it from John and I. Mark, we'll send it back to you for College Football Weekly.